Hello, this is Jay Mahaffey. I'm manager of Bayer Scott Learning Center in Scott, Mississippi. Thought I'd take a few minutes tonight and introduce the Learning Center to anyone not familiar with what we do there around Scott. Talk a little bit about the research program we'll have in the field this year and uh, share some preliminary data with you and the sorts of material that we generate and things will be available to you online, uh, hopefully to help plan and use Bayer products better through the 2020 season. I want to say thank you to anyone that's come to visit us before, anyone tonight that allowed us into their cyberspace long enough to watch this. Uh, we take our interaction with the customers very seriously. It's how we build our program there on the Scott Learning Center. We take your input, build a research program, and hopefully have data to share with you at the end of the year. So a lot of people ask me, what about the Learning Center? What's, what am I going to see if I come visit? And they expect to see another field day when they get there. And it's certainly a component of our work to share with you the new products, new varieties, new hybrids, and things that Bayer is bringing to market. But the primary focus of our work is to generate sound agronomic guidance so that you can use products better when, they, when you choose to purchase those products to use in a farming operation. There are some unique things about Scott and unique things about Southern Farming that I think we're able to bring to light there on Scott on our site. The Learning Center has been in Scott since 2008. We've grown to have about 450 acres that we farm in test plots. We have a whole variety of soil types. And it's a fair enough uh, observation to say, yeah, and it's all on the back of Deer Creek. We do have a lot of those very deep, silty sands, but we also make a special effort to get further off of those onto some of the heavier, more buckshot uh, clay type soil so we can represent a lot of different environments. We farm corn, cotton, and soybeans in those environments. We work on chemistry, things like herbicides, insecticides, fungicides. We also work on seed treatments. But one of the most important things to realize about the things that we do on the Scott Learning Center is we do it in a system that I refer to as commercially simulated. We have a lot of different planting equipment that represent the, the range of probably the most uh, sophisticated, most advanced, computer-driven, GPS-driven equipment all the way down to the earlier generations of that sort of stuff. And then we have some ground drive, uh, older machines that represent uh, some of the other types of planting equipment that are used in southern agriculture. Our experimental units are somewhere between about a quarter of an acre all the way out through a 12-row plot that would be about a half acre. We do that so that we can have commercial scale machines that we plant and harvest with. We farm uh, using equipment that's representative of reality. Now, there, there are a few unique things about Southern agriculture that I think we maintain, try to maintain a focus on at the Learning Center when we plan and lay out our plot work. And an important component of this is most of the material that we have in the field, most of the work that we do in the field year in and year out, comes from ideas that, that growers bring up and ask about their input that we receive through the year. We then design some sort of a test plot that we put out in the field. We do that on our commercial scale research type of a setting, and we generate data that we share through the winter and, and over into the next summer. The unique things about the Southern agriculture that we try to keep our eyes on are we have a whole range of soil types that we've talked about earlier. Our soil pHs are typically around seven. Our CEs, CECs range from about nine all the way up to about 30 plus. But the real differentiating factors are this tortured relationship with water that we have across the South, all the coastal US. Our organic matters are about 1%, which are pretty low relative to a lot of the United States. That's a common characteristic of, of warm winter, warm wet winters that occur across most of the South. We also have some other interactions with water that are particularly unique to us. We have uh, either high humidity, too little water in the soil, or too much water in the soil, usually two of those things at any given time through the year. In an environment where you get 50 or 60 inches of rainfall, last year we got almost 80 inches of rainfall in Scott. Dealing with this relationship with water is very important. It leads us to, have to having to farm on beds, so we have to hip up the fields. We have to generate beds to establish drainage in the field. All of that is relatively unique to the South. Our yield expectations on the site are pretty high. We make usually most of the time 200 bush, plus bushel corn, 
Our soybeans will be 60 or 70 bushels and our cotton will be 12 or 1300 pounds. In 2019, our corn was about average or maybe a little below average. Our soybeans were about average in that 60 to 70 bushel range and our cotton was an exceptional crop at 1600 plus pounds. There are a lot of reasons for that and I'll have a lot more information about each of these crops through the year that we will be sharing in these sort of video type presentation. Now, what will you see in, in Scott, it, it, assuming we will have a, some sort of a program going on this summer uh, for tours, there are lots of things that we have in the field. We continue to maintain a focus on doing all our work. We will have this, this data available to share all winter, regardless of what happens during the summer. In corn, we work on things like tillage. So we'll have flat planted. We'll have uh, freshly tilled and rebedded. We'll have conservation tillage type systems. We evaluate planting depth in corn, populations and hybrids, hybrid selection uh, in all of the systems that we farm there on the site. In soybeans, we have a wide variety of work that we've done over the last few years, things like planting dates and varieties. We work on planting errors in soybeans. We have so many acres of soybeans in the surrounding three or four states that there are always issues, it seems, with some sort of a replanting question. So we work on thin stands, skippy stands, missing rows, all sorts of things like that that just happen to occur in soybean fields. One of our primary focus areas is in cotton and cotton management. We have a, a large program every year to evaluate um, plant growth regulator and variety, or plant growth regulator applications to varieties. We try to identify the, res the response of plant growth regulators on each of the new varieties as it's put into the marketplace. We look at products like Stance, which is a PGR from Bayer, early applications of, of PGRs, populations, and all sorts of things like that. We also have had a large program over the last few years evaluating planting configurations. We plant solid, we'll plant one in one, skip row, which is would be referred to as wide row. So that's somewhere between 60 and 80 inch cotton. And then we'll plant two in one skip row, either on 38s or 30 inch rows. We do some population studies in that sort of work and, and try to maintain a, a focus on how can we manipulate all of the components of the cotton management system to make the cotton management and, and yield potential of the cotton field uh, as, as good as it can be. We also work a little bit on cotton fertility over the years. Now, when you think about the southern production system, it's really undergone a lot of revision in the last few years. And I think it's best summarized by this slide. You think about what's happened in the south in the last few years. We have gone from a heavily cotton producing area to a very diverse, very dynamic production system where we could grow corn, cotton, peanuts, soybeans, rice, grain, sorghum, all sorts of different things. But you think about the contrast in the crops, and I think the, the decision-making process is best described by the contrast between corn and cotton. If you think about corn, there's seven or eight decisions you make before or at planting that help set most of the yield potential of any given corn feed. You think about the hybrid you plant, the technology, seed treatment, planting depth, planting density, planting uniformity, all of those things are, are primary drivers of yield potential in corn fields, and all of them are established before or at planting. You can't undo any of them without starting the crop over. The contrast to that is something like cotton. In cotton, yes, we pick a, a variety, a population, and a row configuration, but that's about as far as we get until we have the crop up and grow it. Then we have all the insect pressures to deal with. We have the applications of PGRs that we have to do in a timely manner to optimize the crop. And when you think about it, we plan corn and we react to cotton on many levels. That's a generalization, but we try to keep a focus on the fact that, that it takes all of that different decision making to make this diverse system uh, run as smoothly as possible. Now with that, uh, I would just offer you this. If you have something else you'd like to, to hear about, this is going to be a continuing video series that I'm going to continue to post over the summertime. We will take requests. If we have a piece of data that you've heard me talk about in a meeting or you've read about online somewhere and you would like us to further explore the details in one of these videos, most of them I think are probably going to be in the range of about five minutes long. This one's a little longer than that. Send me an email or call me directly at the numbers on the, and the address on the screen. 
Myself or one of the Learning Center staff will be happy to talk with you about any of this in any detail you'd like. You can also contact your local Bayer representative for more details. We look forward to seeing you this summer uh, in the field or this winter in a meeting. Uh, Y'all have a good evening and call us if we can help you. Thanks.